Immigrant rights advocates are applauding the governor's decision to suspend New York's involvement in the Secure Communities program. The Department of Homeland Security initiative was actually created to find and deport illegal immigrants who were convicted of felonies, but government statistics show that the majority of immigrants who are deported under the program were actually not convicted felons. So opponents said that this was hurting the relationship between law enforcement agencies and immigrant communities. They are now hoping that the governor's decision to suspend New York's involvement will increase pressure on the federal government to reform the program altogether. Here to talk more about secure communities is Senator Gustavo Rivera. Senator, it is good to see you. It's a pleasure to be with you, Liz. Okay, so you and I actually talked about this mm -hmm. not so terribly long ago. You have been advocating along with others, for example, uh, Congressman Serrano, Congresswoman Nydia Velazquez and, and other members of the state legislature. So, and you held an event today to applaud the governor, so you're quite pleased. Yes, I absolutely am. I think that this is the, the correct decision. It's the right way to go. Uh, it shows that the governor uh, shares, like, like uh, advocates across the state uh, and elected officials across the state, a concern that this is a program that did not make our community safer. And ultimately, we care about public safety, but this program was not doing that. Hmm. Well, you know, here there are two problems. Well, the first of all, th this, New York is only the second state at this point to actually withdraw from, or single, sig signal an intention to withdraw from the program. Uh, the other state, Ohio, has actually um, uh, Illinois. 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 Thank you. No pardon worries. me. Terminated their uh, this uh, participation completely. The governor actually just merely suspended uh, his, his uh, participation in the program. I mean, there, it's a little bit of a difference. You say a difference without a distinction. Well, I. I think that the, the ultimate thing that we need to care about here is that we want to make sure that policies that are implemented in our state make our state safer. Uh, and this policy did not make our state safer. What it did was make victims and witnesses of crimes afraid to approach law enforcement uh, for fear of deportation. There was a, a story uh, from a woman in California who called 911 to report domestic abuse and she went into the system the way that uh, secure communities work is that even before you're arrested and certainly before you're convicted you're fingerprinted her fingerprints were shared with ICE and she for reporting a crime against her was actually marked for deportation so this is exactly the type of situation that we want to avoid and that we believe wholeheartedly that the governor's action here will uh, will stop from happening. Okay, when you say ICE, you mean the immigration authorities, right? That's correct. Right. ICE okay. is an Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency. Uh, okay, so here's the problem, though, that federal officials are saying that if states don't uh, di don't be share fingerprints with the FBI, that they'll lose access to federal criminal databases, and actually that will make it problematic and more difficult for law enforcement agencies to fight crime. So what well, if the wait, what if the crime spikes as a pr as as a re uh, as a result of this? That would also be problematic, wouldn't it? Well, yes, it would, but that's not what this is doing. Currently, the uh, different uh, law enforcement officials around the state, law enforcement agencies, share their information with the FBI. Ending secure communities is not going to stop this. The difference is that they would not they they would not be shared with DHS, with the Department of Homeland Security, which is where ICE is. So it will not stop. Uh, from uh, from identifying people in the FBI database, what it will do is it will not uh, impact communities where people without any type of met of, of criminal uh, record have been identified and deported. Again, recent information tells us that 79 percent of the people that were identified and deported to use, using secure communities did not even have a criminal record. Right. So this will not change. This will not change the uh, arrangement with the FBI, but it will not be shared. The yeah, information but, will not be shared with DHS. But again, as you and I discussed, I think the last time that we talked about this, that 79 percent means that 11 percent of people actually who who were uh, targeted and, and and subsequently deported because of this program were in fact felons. And now, assuming that we're not participating in that anymore, they're not going to be deported. Is, is that not correct? No, that is not correct because there's actually a program that already exists called the Alien Criminal Program uh -huh. that already does that. So this would be an addition to it, but ultimately what we want to make sure is that our communities are safer. And if you have an entire community that feels that they could not go 
to their police officers, if they are witnesses or victims of crimes, then you don't have a safer community. And that's all that we're saying here. We, we believe that this program does not do what it was intended to do, that it does not make our community safer, and we're very glad that Governor Cuomo agrees with us on this. So this program is problematic for a whole host of reasons, not only because of the statistics that you've been citing, but also because it's been a little bit confusing whether or not it's supposed to be voluntary, whether it's mandated participation. The whole nation was supposed to be involved by 2013. Do you believe at this point that with New York and maybe other states that are looking at this, that the, that the, that the president will now say, okay, maybe it's time to overhaul this, particularly when 2012 and his reelection bid and his need for support among a base, which is, of course, the Hispanic community, that will, that will be something he'll take a look at. Well, as we've discussed before, immigration is not just a Latino issue. It is certainly an important issue across the, across the state with communities from all over the world, not only uh, Latin America, but certainly Africa, Asia, uh, the old Soviet republics. But what we're, t what we're talking about here is that we hope that this action by New York uh, will lead to this program being rescinded nationally. Uh, we think that this is a good opportunity for us to move in that direction because we, again, do not believe that this program is doing what it's intended to do, uh, that is making our communities less safe uh, in New York and across the country. And hopefully this will serve, uh, because New York is such an important state, such mm -hmm. a big state uh, with such a large immigrant population, we hope that this leads us uh, to make sure that this is rescinded nationally. And, and just in closing, before we run out of time, are you going to be taking that message to Washington? I mean, I know that you actually worked in the Obama um, campaign in 2008. You have connections, obviously, mm -hmm. to folks who are still uh, involved in the administration, are you going to be trying to send that message up the food chain? Absolutely. We, we continue, uh, as, as elected officials and as advocates, we continue to send the message to Washington that we need comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, and that we make, want to make sure that if we have policies, they're policies that actually make our community safer. Uh, that's what we want to do, design policies that make our community safer. This program does not do that, and that is why we're very glad that Governor Cuomo chose to, to take us out of it. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much, Senator Rivera. It's great to see you. Thanks for coming to the studio to be with us. Thank you for having me, Liz.